then advisors, then boots on the ground. Here we go again! How come we always seem to have money for war, but not for peace? Because war is more profitable than peace to certain people? Bingo! Goes back to money, more money, greed. When it comes to improving education, fixing bridges, or helping the poor with food stamps, mm -hmm. the government cries poverty. But for war, the money always seems to be there. Or for bailing out Wall Street and subsidies, the money seems to be there. It was there, yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. You know. And if you're if you're a little schmuck, you go to prison. If you're uh, Goldman Sachs, I don't even think you get a slap on the wrist. No. No, I heard some talk the other day. I don't know what. A couple of guys are uh, they were being investigated, and they may go to jail and stuff for doing something on Wall Street. But it's about time. Every one of them should be on. In jail, Jer J J uh, Jamie Dimon, uh, all the guys are, uh, you know, uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, 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 all of them. How come? All of them in jail. How come the U.S. media never covered uh, what's going on in Iceland, which is uh, should should be an example for the world? Well, because they want us to do here what they're doing in Greece and around the world. Austerity. You see, pay the big boys out of our money rather than take the money from them. Or let them go bankrupt! Die! That's what they're supposed to do. If, you, if, you if have your business fails, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's how the crab cake crumbles. If you, if you own a business or a business that turns into a huge corporation or present corporation, present day corporation, and you go belly up. That's the way the crab cake crumbles in, in a, a free enterprise system. But not in ours. You know, you, you we keep the dinosaurs alive. Well, the meat eating ones. The, the yeah, ones who the, eat the, our the, lunch. The carnivores, the, the T-Rexes. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, cor the corrupt, greedy T-Rexes, keeping them alive. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I don't know. What do you, What do you think about the uh, or the U.S. auto industry bailout? I I know Ford would have been the the only one left. They had some money, yeah. Ford actually didn't really get hurt. No, they had some money. Ford was, obviously Ford was doing the right things. Yeah, well that was not a bailout per se, that was a loan. They paid some yeah. of it. General Motors has paid most of it back. But GM like kind of learned but it. But AIG yeah. and Wall Street, those weren't loans. Yeah. Those were to buy up their crap. Their securities that turned into crap because they were worthless. Yeah. Mortgage backed securities. So our tax care may pay her money, went in there and bought up that crap so that the banks could have clean, clean balance sheets. And when they had clean balance sheets and they were able to borrow money from the Fed. For less than one percent, they still didn't get the money and lend it out. They let it make money in the Fed. You see, they didn't. They didn't continue in their business of lending money to those who need it. It's like you, if you had three employers, three employees, and at the at the end of the week you have to pay them. And you get a bailout, and you put the mail the bailout in a, in a in a savings account, and you draw the interest on it every week, but you don't pay your employees. That's what they did. 
And of course the corporations they kept trillions of dollars offshore so they wouldn't have to bring it back here and pay taxes on it. You know? Unbelievable. It's all the strangling of Uncle Sam that's been going on. Okay? Yeah. And they try to get the money from the little guy to continue Uncle Sam. Shrinkage. Well, tr in other words, trying to get from the little guy the amounts that they no longer are paying. Look, I'm sure... Broadening the bait. I'm sure uh, the Republicans and the Tea Baggers, Tea Party, I'm sure they know the truth about the job market and the economy and about uh, welfare, people unemployed can't find a job, and and uh, there's no wor work for the welfare recipient. They know the real truth, but they, they, I, their objective, they come up with this all this preposterous, stupid ideology, as, as an, I, ideology and asinine comments because they just want to shrink government in every which way. Make it impotent. And privatize everything. Well, privatizing turns it all over to the corporations, the private sector. Right, exactly. That's what that's all about. I mean, I heard that... And if that you do that, then you have no reason for government to yeah. exist. Hey, I heard if you, uh, you're on welfare and you win the lottery, they expect you to pay them back. Yes, they do. They want to get paid back. I have a personal um, <laughs> knowledge of a person back in the 70s... Right. ...who was unemployed, had a savings, a couple of thou, right. lived on that for about two years, right. and when he ran out of moolah, he went for SSI, okay. and he received SSI okay. until his social security disability came in. Okay. So that was like three months. So he, he they swapped them. They, they switched him from SS supplemental security income to social security disability. But he had to pay back the $750, which was the three months of SSI. Oh. When he got his first social security check. So he got like a retroactive SSD check? So they looked at every penny. Yeah. So he had to pay it back. But I'm, but, but, but I'm sure, uh, what about the corporate uh, bailouts where they were not required to pay back? All of them were never required to pay back. Uh, I just told you. Yeah. The United States taxpayer bought up all these worthless securities from the banks so that the banks, their balance sheets looked clean. What are you talking? You see, when a bank has a bank has assets, and it has, yeah, you know, whatever they call when they're not an asset. So right? they so, so they used uh, collectively uh, the banks and the, I guess Goldman Sachs. They they util utilize what is uh, infamously known as Ponzi scheme, right? Well, it's not a Ponzi scheme in the in the you know the actual sense of it. It's a uh, it's cheating. It's, it's lying it's flat out. It's a cr it's corrupt. It's criminal. Yeah, it's criminal. Over here, they had billions and billions of dollars in worthless mortgage-backed securities. Their assets over here were very limited. Okay, so all of these here did away with those assets. They were in effect bankrupt until the U.S. taxpayer comes along and buys up all this junk. Well, now the bank has got some assets and a clean balance sheet. Hey, hey, we, oh boy. You know, and then the money that they borrowed from the Fed is in the Fed drawing interest for them. So their assets, you know, grow. But when they get the money, the money's supposed to come here and it's supposed to be lend out the people. You know. I know. One thing's for sure, if one thing's for sure, if I ever win the lottery, my my money is getting put 
and most likely in, into a um, federal credit union bank. One of those small. I wonder what they, they give you for interest payments. Well, going with the big, the big banks is because they got you nothing. No, you don't. You don't get. It's nothing. under one percent. You don't get nothing. Like zero point zero twelve or something like that. When I was in high school, they were giving you five or six percent. I got six percent in nineteen seventy. Uninsured, uninsured. From the Pulaski Savings Bank. I remember that. In Irvington, New Jersey. I think my grandfather dealt with Spencer Savings and Loan. We have one in Lodi. This It is one left. It's little, but it's there. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as uh, the big boys, uh, what is it, Citibank, Bank of America, they suck. Well, the Republicans back in the 1980s used the Savings and Loan Banks as their own private piggy bank and made the taxpayer pay for that bailout under Mr. Ray Gunn. Okay? The taxpayer meaning the middle class and the poor, and the poor. with consumption taxes. But it, with Republicans, it's never, ever, ever the, the, the rich, the top 20% that pay. Never. And they want them to pay less. Okay? You're dealing with pure corruption, people. Wake up, wake up. It's, it's like it's 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 not just re Republican versus Democrat. It's it's the problem is the two-party system, you know. And 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 and, and the even bigger problem is people. The American people do not get to know any of the progressive, independent candidates <clears throat> because they don't get FaceTime. So even when they run, nobody gets to know them. They're, they're never invited to the debates. No, the two-party system owns, owns, you know, the elected. So you got your choice, Tweedledee or Tweedledum, you know, the frying pan or the furnace. And if it's a Republican, it's usually dumber. Tweedledumber. Or crazy like a fox, you know, somebody who pretends to be Tweedledumber. No, they don't pretend to be dumb, believe me. You mean they are dumb. Because their ideology makes them that way. Right. You know, it's uh. You can see that with all these stupid you know. Republicans who say stuff about uh, uh, abortions and and rape and all this stuff. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. Well, hey, they're but even sick. like you said, even the Democrats and Michelle Buckman have campaign uh, contributions from corporations. Michelle Buckman and, and her hubby and the other uh, 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 reparative uh, 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 the procedures. We can make gay people stray if we just pray to God and, and, and use the Bible and stuff. Well, that's what Republicans say to the poor. Well, well, we'll pray for you. So money's going to come down from the sky from God and uh, to pay buy food and pay well, your number, rent. And number one, they don't understand it. God doesn't hear their prayers in the first place. Well, okay? evangelicals feel you can, you can talk to God anytime. Oh, yeah. It's like talking to the wall. You can talk on a wall anytime you want. You see that thing there? It's like talking to anonymous. Mask. See that thing there? Yeah. Speak it up. You mean the stovepipe? Only a few people in any era have a stovepipe to God. The 144,000. That's it. Period. The elect. Out of the 7 billion in the world. Well, that's what Herbert W. Armstrong preached. That's what's in the Bible. Uh, that the. Uh, there is no a rapture uh, to save the uh, to save Christians from the tribulation. In other words, uh, they're all meant to perish. They will perish. die. They will die with the others. Right. They will die. They will die to be resurrected at a at a later another date, time. At another time. Another time and place. Right. But right now. God only calls a few to do the jobs that he needs done <laughs> when Jesus comes again. Yeah, well getting back to Bachman, I mean, I mean, believe it or not, I don't know why they, they still make Sarah Palin relevant. Bachman's well, just a bubblehead. Well, wait bubble a head. second. Fox News took her back. <laughs> so she will be a little bit more relevant now. But well, they like, they like, uh... Fox News likes these idiots that have no facts to back them up. These ideologue, these, 
these, these because it's not a fact that channel they you okay. think the controversy is, it gives them the ratings exactly and the ratings go up and because the and, and the sponsors like that because then more idiots in more the more warm bodies more idiots in the United States that are that are part of this ridiculous cult out down south in the red the red Bible states and out west in the red Bible states, Bible Belt states, they watch Fox News. All these 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 morons watch Fox News. You think you think these people like the um, instead of wor thinking about facts and education, you think they're concentrating more on the hype of the ideology from Fox News? The hype, like like watching a, a, a prosperity preacher on TV, an evangelist that gets all funky and excited. <clears throat> it's like it's, it seems to be emotionally it's like based. Your friend says he has a pastor, which he believes. So these people have a channel that they believe in. This pastor is awesome to him. Exactly. He, 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 the, the, it's the person all, overrides the content. And when I said to him, uh, what makes you think that this pastor in Brooklyn is 100% accurate? <coughs> and he changes the subject. How can he be accurate? If he pre preaches the traditional crap. And the amazing thing is they say, they can prove it. It's in the Bible. Oh, how and come every time I look it up, it ain't there? I told him, give me the verse. I mean, give me, give me the uh, chapter and the verse. If you'll notice, yeah. all the God projects has chapter and verse, baby. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yes, by the way, oh, by the way, I couldn't find the part in Genesis about eating meat. Nine... Two or three, I think I said. So go to chapter nine. Yeah. Nine. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of like debunks. Niner, niner. It kind of like debunks uh, veganism being like godly. Well, for a wait a minute now, it doesn't do that at all. You gotta. It, it, God doesn't prefer one way or the other, and veganism is just another way of eating. Yeah, it's like. So why is it? You know. It's like celibacy or not being celibate. I just saw a, I think it was in Time Magazine, <clears throat> uh, what's, what country it is, I don't know, but it eats, oh, Argentina. Argentina eats like four or five times the red meat that we do. Because it's more reasonable, because the industry is so huge. But over here, no, you can't have no red meat because of a heart attack. Cancer, heart disease. I know they, they don't. Uh, the cancer is okay. I believe that because you, you don't have any fiber. You have fiber, you ain't got no worry about that. But they don't say that. It's just heart disease. They never Eat talk. The red meat, it's heart disease. They never talk about sugar in the United States, like the, the register. Uh, well, I mean they do, they do, but they they don't demonize sugar as much as they should. In, in the, fact, in the American medical profession, on the Create Network, Chef Nick Stolino. Create Network. Yes. What the hell is that? That's the network that has food, travel, painting. Really. Uh, really? Home repair. Nick Stolino's on that. Gardening. Nick Stolino's on that. Yeah. Really? What about Ming Tsai? Is he there? He's there too. Really? Everybody. I haven't there. seen Ming Tsai. Lydia while. Bassiani. Oh wow! All cool, of them. All cool, of them. cool. But, but, guess who sponsors Nick Stellino? Oh god! Domino Sugar. Oh shit! <laughs> so there you go. Oh boy. Well, hey, uh, I want to have a moment of silence for a Bergen. Before I forget, I just just reminded me. A uh, moment of silence for a Bergen County native who passed away, uh, a superstar uh, of the uh, the award-winning uh, HBO series The Sopranos, Tony Soprano himself, James uh, Gandolfini, uh, died of a heart attack in Italy. Um, it's, it's sad, but I mean, he didn't take care. He's only 51 years old. He was only 51. 
but obviously he didn't take care of himself. He had a uh, history of drugs and yeah. booze and cigars. Cigars. But, but plus he was he was definitely overweight. And that too. You know, and uh, I'm telling you, the white sugar, it reminded me of this white sugar, white flour, rec refined carbohydrates with the Syndrome X, too much insulin in the blood from this, this diet, Shh. insulin resistance. This is the reason why America is obese. Not calories in, calories out, but the refined carbs is causing this obesity, which is pretty much what the American garbage food industry produces, refined carbohydrates. And uh, this is what's causing it. And, uh, you know, the uh, Italian-American diet is loaded with... Um, I'm not even going to demonize the fat in fettuccine alfredo. I'm going to demonize the white flour and the white sugar. You know, but anyway, moment of silence for James Gandolfini, who is a native of my county. And uh, no, not 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 Reverend Bill, but my county of Bergen, Bergen County, New Jersey. I am in Bergen also. Well, he lives in Bergen, but he's from he, Reverend Bill is a Pennsylvanian. Oh. But you spent a lot of years in oh. in uh, New Jersey. I was born in Pennsylvania. Yes. Yes. You were born in the uh, in the brewery. Uh, Hazelton, Pennsylvania. Oh, Hazelton. Okay. Eastern portion of the state. Near Scranton? Near the, yes. Near the Poconos? Wilkesbury, Scranton, Shemokin. So you were you were north northeast in, in the in the Poconos. Route eighty yeah. to Delaware, Eastern, Eastern Delaware Water Gap. So you're across the bridge. So you're a mount you were a mountain man. <laughs> no, Hazelton was a city. Oh, okay. That was a city, yeah. So like Scranton. No, I wasn't like, born in rural. No, like Scranton. No, but anyway, anyway, I can be born in a rural section. Moment of silence for James Gandolfini. Okay. Um, and if people don't realize it, uh, my hometown of Lodi, New Jersey, happens to be the location of the original one and only Bada Bings, oh! which is actually Satin Dolls. It's on Route 17 South in Lodi, New Jersey, in Bergen County. I think James Gandolfini, I think his hometown was Montvale. No, I'm sorry, Park Ridge. Uh. Park Ridge, New Jersey, because they mentioned Park Ridge High School that he went to. Uh, but he lived, rumor has it that he lives close to us, and I had no idea how close he, he, he was where him and his family lived. Mm. Very close to us um, in Bergen County. But anyway, that you finished that article, right? Okay, that's it. Thank you for joining us for Progressive Discussions. And uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, unfortunately, we're supposed to get a bit of a heat wave this ah. coming week. In the 90s, but thunderstorm, ah. which I don't understand. How do, you ha how do you have so many thunderstorms and have it be 90 degrees and humid? Yeah, well, in other words, the hot air doesn't meet the cold air. In other words, it, it thunderstorms, but it does not alleviate the oppressive heat and humidity. Well, the, the, uh, it's a wonder how the thunderstorm begins in the first place, because there's no cold air. Yeah, because you need the a cold... The hot air has to heat, uh, hit the cold air, and yeah. then boom, boom, a thundercloud. Yeah, the, uh, the cold front meets the, the, the warm front. And just like if you pour hot water over a glass of ice cubes, you hear noise. You hear a lot of cracking you hear and the noise. the glaciers cracking. Yeah. That, Avalanche! That's another talk show, the, 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 melting, the melting poles. But of course, the conservatives say it's just the planet Earth just changes every so many thousands of years it's really not don't enough. blame the smokestacks no don't blame the petroleum industry don't blame corporations the smokestacks nah don't blame the destruction of the rainforest for global warming uh you don't yeah, you don't need trees you don't need trees like rush limbaugh used to say you don't need dolphins and whales they're really <laughs> stupid animals you don't need this right anything that 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 hinders business making a profit no making more profit you see, Making this more is profit. a this is a this is a thing that, that, that our people today they get caught up in this thing. 
Or are you trying to tell me that, that corporations and businesses in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s didn't make profits? They always did. Of course they did. A fair. But today, they make enormous profits. Right, at the expense of the planet and people. Correct. They've siphoned it upward. Whereas companies, corporations during FDR and Truman and Eisenhower made fair profits not at the expense of people on the planet. They made so much profits, by the way, that instead of paying their people more wages, they made a tacit agreement with the government. You know what? Instead of paying these people more wages, we'll give them health insurance. Mm -hmm. We'll give them pensions. Fringe benefits. And that we could use as tax write-offs. And that's what happened then. So you mean to tell me they weren't making any profits? They're making profits. The, the, the wealthy always cry poverty. They always cry. But that's just to, that's just to, uh, like the magician. Yeah. With the misdirection. Sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Well. Going, you know, the, don't look over here. Don't look here. Yeah. Look over there. Well, See you... that poor slob? He's on food stamps. He's taking our money. Right. And they're doing something else that you you don't see. Well, B William uh, H. Morrow III, as well as yourself, both of you has told me that, as a rule of thumb, everybody um, applying for Social Security disability gets automatically turned down the first time. Correct. And in, other, in other words, they're playing a numbers That's a game. That's policy. It's like a numbers game. Like, they feel that the odds are that a lot of people won't fight it and they won't appeal it. Like one third. Right. Which is also kind of unethical on their part to well, do that. Of course that. it's unethical. But it took a whistleblower like Alsa, yeah. which is a organization of lawyers that fight for your social security okay. benefits. Okay. They had to expose that policy. Ah, good for them. Okay. No one knew about that. Good for them. With the uh, 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 right. And I also want to thank, speaking of what Bill said, I want to thank all the pro bono uh, attorneys, uh, uh, paralegals, and other people out there that are helping the poor fight the government for to get what is rightful, rightfully, theirs. rightfully theirs by law. By law. Oh, they want to change that, don't they? Um, uh, uh, this one individual I want to salute uh, in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. Her name is Jackie. She does just that. Uh, a friend of William H. Morrow III. So, all right. Say so long to these people. So long, people. All right. Do your homework. Read. Educate your mind. Research Get everything. Don't just believe people. Research everything you hear and get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored by going to NewsletterCensored.com. This is how you join our organization and be a part of our organization. This is the best way to be a part of us. So get it now.